Hi everyone. Um, have you noticed how often now feminism is compared to a religion? I decided to actually have a look into this and initially I had come up with this kind of checklist which goes more or less like this. They have an evil godlike entity to oppose, patriarchy, and just like the devil in Christianity, the definition of this evil god shifts and changes with, ne with uh, necessity. They have a fallen state, the current state of inequality. They have a promised land or heaven, equal rights for women. They have a series of dogmas, pay gap, rape culture, victim blaming, discrimination of work, women at work, the glass ceiling, women must be the only victims of domestic violence, and all this crap. That cannot be discussed. They must be accepted as true, whatever the actual proof may be. They have their prophets, Andrea Dworkin and Gloria Steinem come to mind, but there are many more, which advocate violence against the unbelievers. They have their preachers and televangelists, such as Anita Sarkeesian and Rebecca Watson. There are the radical feminists, like there are the radical Muslims or Christians. And just like modern Muslims and moderate Christians, moderate, air quotes here, feminists, say those aren't real feminists, they don't understand the message of feminism. Those that disagree with feminism are labelled rape apologists and or misogynists, like just like atheists are said to worship the devil by Christian fundamentalists. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but it is a little bit forced, to be honest, and uh, I actually wrote this checklist more of a joke than anything, but it did get me thinking. It does look like feminism is behaving like a religion, so I decided to look into it with a bit more depth. And for that, the first thing to do is define what a religion is. Let's start with a couple of dictionary definitions. Religion. Human beings' relation to that which they regard as holy, sacred, spiritual or divine. Or, religion. A personal set or institutionalized system of religious attitudes, beliefs and practices a cause, principle, or system of beliefs held with order and faith. From looking at these, I suppose we could say that feminism could fit, but I'm still not satisfied, and we know how useless dictionary definitions can be. Let's see what the experts in the field have to say about it. The anthropologist Clifford Goetz defined religion as a system of symbols which acts to establish powerful, pervasive, and long-lasting modes and motivations in men by formulating conceptions of a general order of existence and clothing these conceptions with such an aura of factuality that the moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. The sociologist Emile Durkheim had this to say about it. A religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things. That is to say, things set apart and forbidden, beliefs and practices which unite into one single moral community called a church, all or those who adhere to them. Sacred things are not, however, limited to gods or spirits. On the contrary, a sacred thing can be a rock, a tree, a spring, a pebble, a piece of wood, a house. In a word, anything can be sacred. Religious beliefs, myths, dogmas, and legends or the representations that express the nature of these sacred things and the virtues and powers which are attributed to them. One modern academic theory of religion, which is social constructionism, says that religion is an orientation system that helps to interpret reality and define human beings. Among the main proponents of this theory of religion are Daniel de Buisson, Timothy Fitzgerald, Talal Assad, and Jason Ananda Josephson. They do apply this to Western religions in particular, but one must note that feminism is a mainly Western phenomenon too. Definitions of religion tend to suffer from one of two problems. They are either too narrow and exclude many belief systems, which most agree are religious, 
or they are too vague and ambiguous, suggesting that just about any and everything is a religion. A good example of a narrow definition is the common attempt to define religion as belief in God, effectively excluding polytheistic religions and atheistic religions, while including the theists who have no religious belief system. A good example of a vague definition is the tendency to define religion as worldview, but how can every worldview qualify as a religion? Some have argued that religion isn't hard to define, and the plethora of conflicting definitions is evidence of how easy it really is. The problem lies in finding a definition that is empirically useful and empirically testable. Distinguishing between the sacred and the profane is common and important enough in religions that some scholars of religion have argued that this distinction should be considered the defining characteristic of religion. The creation of such a distinction can help direct believers to focus on transcendental values and hidden aspects of the world around us. Of course, merely noting the existence of the sacred usually isn't sufficient. If a religion emphasizes the sacred, then it will also emphasize ritual acts involving the sacred. Special actions must occur at sacred times, in sacred places, and or with sacred objects. These rituals serve to unite members of the current religious community, not just with each other, but also with their ancestors and their descendants. It's normal for religions to present believers with a general picture of the world as a whole, and the place of the individual in such a world. For example, whether the world exists for them, or if they are just a bit player in someone else's drama. This picture will usually include some details of an overall purpose or point of the world, and an indication of how the individual fits into that world. Possibly the best way of defining religion is to make a list of traits that are common in religions, rather than declaring what, de what defines a religion. The more of these traits are present in a belief system, the more religious it is. I find this to be a good list of such traits. So, here goes. Belief in something sacred, for example, gods or other supernatural beings. A distinction between the sacred and the profane. Ritual acts focused on sacred objects. A moral code believed to be sanctioned by a higher moral authority. Characteristically religious feelings, or sense of mystery, sense of guilt, adoration, belonging, which tend to be aroused in the presence of sacred objects and or during the practice of ritual, and which are connected in idea with the supernatural. Prayer and other forms of communication with the supernatural. A worldview or general picture of the world as a whole, and the place of the individual therein a more or less total organization of one's life based on the worldview, a social group bound together by the above. I'll leave it at this for the moment, and in my next video on this subject, I will compare each of these points with aspects of feminism, bringing examples if any apply. In the meantime, feel free to discuss this in the comments.